Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Welcome to the broadcast. It's your friend, Dr. Alexis, coming in from Dallas, Texas. As you do me a coming in, do me a favor, like, share, tag the broadcast. Let somebody know that I'm on. Once again, it's your friend, Dr. Alexis, coming in with from Dallas, Texas, with the dream of the Lord for married and unmarried people. The dream of the Lord. As you're coming on, do me a favor. Let me know where you're coming in from. Once again, it's your friend, Dr. Alexis, coming in from Dallas, Texas, with the dream of the Lord concerning married and unmarried. And I believe that this is going to increase your faith. And this is also going to cause you to step into a place in your mind, in your emotions concerning this, even though it's not about emotions. But I see where there has been so many bad emotions concerning marriage uh, for those who are unmarried. And even for those who are married may feel in a stuck place. Place, but I believe that you are going to come up out of that place, even by the dream of the Lord. The dream of the Lord can break yokes. The dream of the Lord can break depression. The, the dream of the Lord can bring you into a new season. The dream of the Lord. That's why it's important to understand what God is saying. What is the dream of the Lord? The dream of the Lord is when God is declaring something, when you know that heavenly beings are in the atmosphere, when you know that God has spoken it, just like the angel of the Lord, there is a dream of the Lord that carries the presence of the Holy Spirit in the dream. It is a dream that causes you to step into the next chapter of your life. And so that's why I say the dream of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. And I believe that God has a word concerning this. So even in your midday on Friday, I want you to come in if you're married or unmarried. That's most of you because the Lord has a word concerning this in this season that's going to unlock you. Hallelujah. Come on into the room. Welcome. Friday is Friday. Come on. It's Friday, and I believe God has a word for his people. Let me know where you're coming in from. Once again, it's your friend, Dr. Alexis, coming in from Dallas, Texas. Grace and peace from San Antonio, Texas. Grace and peace from Louisiana. Grace and peace, Alabama. Philly in the house. Detroit, Michigan. Orlando, D.C. East Coast, New Jersey. Brooklyn, NYC. Grace and peace. Chandler, Arizona. Grace and peace. Thank you so much. Renee did my hair. Um, Renee, she is, I just call her Renee Hare, uh, but she is a, let me get her last name so y'all could know. Shout out to Renee. She's so amazing. I put some pink and blue in here, you know, just being, being myself. Let me give you guys her last name. She's so bomb and so amazing. Renee Bennett is her name. Renee S. Renee Bennett. She's a, a woman of God, all of that good stuff prophesize all that. And she did my hair last night. Her name is Renee Bennett and she's out of Dallas, Texas. Tell her I sent you. Okay. All right. You guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast East coast. Come on y'all. Let's get the numbers up. Almost 500 of you in the room on a Friday. And I know people will catch this replay and it's going to be the bomb.com. Yes. I said that Garland, Texas, grace and peace to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the broadcast. If any of your friends need some, some, some encouragement, tag your girl, Ta tag your friend if they need some encouragement say here friend here goes some encouragement that I believe is going to spark something in you and some of y'all who who hear the Lord who know what the spirit is saying to the church you're gonna feel a wind on it as I say come on there's a wind on it VA welcome 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 London Connecticut North Carolina welcome 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 thank you Connecticut welcome Baltimore, I'll drop her IG. Let me tell you her IG real quick. Um, make us a house of prayer. Shout out to Kyle Lovett in the background. Um, mm, hair artist Renee. Hair artist Renee. She's part of Forbes Black. She's a part of so much adorned by Renee. She does a lot. She's in Plano. Hair artist Renee, okay? Kentucky, Dallas, welcome. Welcome. All right, give me a couple of seconds, and then I'm going to tell the dream at 4.30. So can we get two more minutes? Let me know where you're coming in from.
pink is my favorite color, Roz. Thank you, girl. That's one of my favorite colors. Pink, purple, blue, all of that purple, all that those surrounding colors. Come on, I feel this word, y'all, and I, I put it online, but I but I didn't kind of deal with the details, and it's the it's the details of the dream. That's why it's so important to write the dream down, right? It's so important to write it down. It's so important to to sit on it. Sometimes we interpret it too soon because a ter- an interpretation with the dream of the Lord, it can be months, it can be years until you really understand what that dream meant because the Holy Spirit and the Father, he speaks to you in ways that you can understand. That's why I teach about the dreams because I understand that a lot of people get off with the dream world. They don't understand that God is really teaching you and training you through your experiences of dreaming. So when you dream one thing, you can go back and say, well, I remember five years ago, I dreamed this and this was this meant. So you're understanding your own language that God has given you because he speaks to his children in ways that they can understand because we are his children, right? We are his children. And so he wants to speak to us in ways that we can comprehend, in ways that we can grasp. It's not hard. It's not hard, y'all. That's why I wrote Simply Prophetic. It's not hard. It's a simple thing because we are already seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And he wants us to encounter him in new ways. Come on. He wants us to understand him and have conversations with him and become more intimate with him. And so I'm telling y'all, This dream, come on. Okay, so it's 4.30. Let me share with you guys. And for those of you who want to catch the replay, just make sure you catch it, you know? Welcome for those of you who are watching later because I know that people are going to watch this because there is a weight on it. And whenever there's a weight, there are people who come towards it. And, And I believe that what you receive is what you get, right? So what I receive in my spirit is what I'm going to obtain, right? Blessed is she who believed for there has been a performance. There has been another, another uh, version says there has been a demonstration. Come on, come on in here. Blessed is she who believed for there has been a performance and demonstration. Mary didn't even know she was carrying Jesus until the angel came and was like, yo, hell Mary, thou art blessed and highly favored from the Lord. And many of you don't even know that you're carrying your partner or you're carrying your partner to come in the spirit realm. Remember yesterday when I came live, I was talking about uh, the verse, Was it Romans? I can't remember. No, it was uh, Romans 28 when it talked about how he intercedes, his spirit intercedes for us, intercedes, intercepts. Come on, even via groans. A lot of us have prayed things. We don't even know what we pray because we prayed in the spirit. Last night, I felt a stir and I just began to pray and intercede for the people and intercede and just pray as I was driving. That's the best time to pray, pray in tongues and people could watch you or whatever. But I'm telling you, that's the best time because you're interceding on behalf of something you don't even know about, but God already knows. He's already unlocked your future with that prayer. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Come on. All right, y'all. So God bless you guys. Thank you for coming in this more, um, sorry, this Friday. Hallelujah. Let me know if the music is too loud. Cause I don't want to overshadow what I'm saying with the music but I like to have music because prophetic people need music to kind of roll with the wave, right? You might mess around and start prophesying with the, you know, with the, with the music, you hear what I'm saying? So I love, I love the prophetic music uh, because it causes something to be impregnated in me. It's going to cause you to be impregnated with vision. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's something that happens that takes place in the atmosphere. Music shifts. Come on. Music causes you to walk alongside that word in tandem with that word. I don't know how people don't have music in their house. You need music to set the atmosphere, to cause all demonic interferences to leave, to go. I'm telling you, music is important. The right music, the right music. There's times that you can listen to the wrong music where music had a wind on it a year ago, but the Lord's saying, no, I don't want you to listen to that no more. It's something else that I need to impregnate with you, with vision right now. Music ushers you into a place. Come on now in here. 
Come on in here. Come on in here. That's why I love the minstrels. That's why I love the minstrels. Okay, let me tell y'all this dream. All right, so this dream was um, October the 4th, 2023. I wrote the dream at 7 a.m. I had it right before I woke up. Now, we know that in the scripture, you see where right before the king woke up, he had a dream, right? God was speaking. Uh, and so right, I often right before you wake up, that's when you know, like, okay, it's something with that dream that God wants to put on my mind, you know, to let me know this is the word of the Lord. Okay, so let me go to this. I'm going to be looking over here, you guys, so I can, so I can be uh, reading it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. So in the dream, I was with, I was in a room filled with couples and I was with a guy named Daryl and his wife, Tiara. Now I haven't seen Daryl in maybe 10 years. I actually inboxed them this dream, okay? I hadn't seen him in maybe 10 years, okay? What I know about Daryl is that he attends a church in Chicago that's um, Bill Winston, Word of Faith Church, okay? That's important there. That's what I know about him, all right? I also know that he's a businessman but he's really a man of faith. He preaches faith. We were gathered in a hotel conference room along with several couples. There were unmarried couples and there were married couples, right? And during this gathering, something extraordinary began to unfold. As we were all present in this conference room, I saw a man in the front of the room and he began to declare the word glory. He started to say glory, glory, glory. And the more that he said glory, I started to lean over and all of us started to lift our hands and lean over and it almost charged the atmosphere to be powerful. And I started to witness the power of God come upon us. Hallelujah. After that, I saw us all like out in the lobby in um, in like exchanging phone numbers. People who hadn't talked for years were talking. People were connecting who hadn't connected in years, who hadn't had a conversation in years. Almost like broken relationships were coming back together, but also miscommunication was being healed. All those things were happening with different people. I saw people from my college years and I saw them getting together and getting married. And then I saw um, a, um, a man who I knew had been unmarried. He was married prophetically, like he, he got married with this girl and it was prophetic and all that. Well, she divorced him in, in real life. But during the, um, right when he was getting a divorce, she divorced him because she didn't want to be a part of the church world or whatever, right? Or she didn't want to be a part of his world, church world, whatever. She was young. But right when she was getting divorced, he was getting divorced. He wasn't even divorced yet. I was at church with him and I remember this prophet walked up to him who didn't know his situation. And she said, I see, a, I see a woman with you. And the Lord said that he's sending your wife. Well, me and my mind, I know. I'm like, now nah, this man, he still, you know, what's, but he, she said, he's sending your wife. And I see this woman and she's short. And I see, I see what God is going to do in everything, you know, and begin to declare that over his life. Do you know that weekend he ends up meeting this girl in real life? He ends up meeting this girl that same weekend. And then he ends up proceeding later with the divorce and everything, but he gets married. They've now been married for eight, nine years. And I saw them mentoring another couple into getting married who have been waiting for years, right? And so I saw the unmarried couple become married. And I know the Lord was using that to show me that even those who had a prophetic word, who became divorced from the word or whatever, maybe you got married and it was this prophetic word. Maybe you end up getting divorced. Maybe it was a lot of trauma because there was a lot of trauma around that. And the Lord is speaking that he's sending someone even for you. And what the one did 
didn't do, I will call someone else to do. Come on in here. What one didn't do, what one did not receive the word of the Lord, when one would not carry it out. What does the Bible say in, in 1 Kings when it tells uh, Samuel to stop crying and to get up and to go anoint the king? What Saul wouldn't do, David would do. Come on in here. And so God was letting me know that that's why he was showing me that couple. And then I saw couples from people who I haven't seen since college getting married. Hallelujah. And then I remember seeing Facebook. And I saw Facebook. I don't know if this is representing Facebook dating or digital dating. I don't know. But I saw Facebook and I saw Lakeland Florida. And to me, what I what I see with Lakeland, Florida, is there was a revival in Lakeland, Florida. And the Lord was telling me through that there's about to be a revival concerning marriages for the unmarried and the married and for the married couples concerning business, concerning connecting with men, connecting with other men and couples being in fruitful relationships and events concerning marriage. He said, don't forget about the married people either because often when we get off into the singles we forget about the married but the Lord said I'm even sending a wind on that and then God began to speak about those who are 60 plus and those who have been waiting for a long winter season he said I'm sending them help I'm sending them the upset person who they're called to be with hallelujah hallelujah and we were guided and there were those who were mentored into the right place. See, we know that Lakeland has the history of miracles and revival. And so the Lord said, there shall be miracles and revival concerning this area. My glory is about to orchestrate them into a new era. But even where there has been a, a satanic attack against marriages, hallelujah, I am causing my glory to redeem. He he said, I'm causing my glory to redeem. Hallelujah. And so that same night, I saw I woke up, I put the dream on Facebook, and there's a little more to the dream, but I, I want to add this part. That same night, uh, that morning, I put it on Facebook, and I was telling my friend Chanel and her sister, her sister's name, Destiny. Destiny called, and Destiny said, Dr. Alexis, I had a dream last night, and in the dream, I saw where marriages were being attacked, and she said, I saw where there was a piece of paper behind the bed, and for us, we understand the piece of paper can represent witchcraft. It can represent curses. There were things written on it, and, and so she said, I took the piece of paper and began to tear it up and said, this is demonic. Whatever is being spoken against marriage, whatever is being spoken against those who are unmarried, I bind it in the name of Jesus. And I begin to speak life and my friend began to prophesy life. And her name is Destiny. And God was saying, because this is destiny, he was reconfirming the word of the Lord that he had given me the dream of the Lord by giving her a, the second part of the dream. Hey, come on in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And then, and then he was letting me know that I have already gone before you. I have already gone before you in this area, right? So then I said, okay, let me look up the name Daryl. Let me look up the name Daryl. One second, y'all. All right. Okay, so I looked up the name Daryl, you guys. How my device gonna go offline? I'm over here flowing. That's fine. Okay, look, I looked up the name Daryl, and Daryl, Daryl, let me tell you, Daryl, it meant beloved or dear one, right? It meant beloved or dear one. It conveyed a sense of endearment and affection. Then I looked up the name Tierra, and Tierra meant crown, or diadem, or royalty, or grandeur. And to me, the Lord was prophesying that I am sending my beloved 
one, my son, to my daughter, or I am a reconfiguring, or I'm bringing back together, or I'm merging the marriage, marriage unit for those who are married. I am reinstilling this thing. I'm causing you to come back to a unit, right? The one with the crown and Daryl being the one who is his son, beloved one. Hallelujah. And so God was speaking. This is what I want to do for my children. There has been an attack against marriage. And so for those who are married, you may be in a season where you're feeling not like you don't have any community, where you don't have a connection, where you don't have couples that you can connect with. There aren't events or the right events for couples. And God saying, I'm going to cause many of you to, I'm charging you to host events for couples and to host experiences for holy couples right? And then business deals come out of that, right? Community connections came out of that. But then for the unmarried who had been waiting a long time, I seen a girl who had been waiting since I was in college. He said, even for her, she shall be married. She shall be married. Hallelujah. Even for her, and you know what was interesting, you guys? This is very interesting. The girl, because this is how God speaks to me. I'm just telling you, the, the dreams are so intricate. The girl who was getting married, who hadn't been, who was since college not married, her name was Ashley. So I just now, I'm on the page with y'all, I'm looking up the name Ashley, because I'm like, oh, I forgot to look up her name. Ashley, it says, is another derivative of Leah. Now we know Leah in the word, right? Right? If if you don't know, let's let's get to it. Come on. Leah was the elder daughter of Laban and the wife of Jacob. Right? But she was the one who was kind of the one that that, that wasn't the the one who was loved. She was the less favored. She had a lot of children but she was less favored. It was rivalry and jealousy, right? She had her own experiences. And there was deception surrounding her. So I know it's something deep with that, but God is speaking to me that there are those who are the Leahs who have been forgotten about concerning marriage. Come on. Come on. And, and the word of the Lord for the month is, it's time. It's time. So I knew when the glory showed up that this was the dream of the Lord. When I'm leaned down in the dream and I'm feeling the presence and I see a man in the front declaring glory, glory. And then God shows me Lakeland for his beloved, right? We are his beloved. But in my dreams, there are multiple, um, there are double entendres and triple entendres, meaning triple meanings, where, where God begins to show me the different ways that he is speaking. He didn't leave anybody out in this equation. There was the divorced who had the prophetic word, who someone sat there and, and decided they didn't want to go with the word, right? And that person was married. Then there was the person who had not, who had been the Leah of marriage, right? Where they had not been married. I seen them getting married, right? And then it, 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 it talks about Leah having the children and all of that, right? The, the failed marriage, whatever the, the, she being the one that there was deception and trickery. Come on. So God was showing me the multiplicity in, on the people who he is concerned for in the body of Christ. Come on. He's going to remember you in this season. And so that's for us who are married. Don't forget about the married ones. Because it ain't all peaches and cream when you receive that, right? It's not. There's still other things that you got to walk through. But remember Lakeland, Florida and what God, what it meant to me. Miracles. We are about to see miracles in the area of marriage. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even Destiny's dream concerning the witchcraft and the word curses and all of that that she saw. And see, for Destiny, her background is that her family were in the occult. So her family, they, back in years prior, they had been in the cult. They are now saved. So her and her sister are now saved and her other, their family has come into salvation. But back in the day they were in the cult. And so in their family, they would take, um, they would take a, a note card and put hair on it in words and put it in the back of a bed. Right. So she saw in the way in which she could see. But for me to be in the dream and my friend Chanel to be in the dream, it was representing, we were talking about Chanel was prophesying and I begin to say, this is not God, right? And talk about the witchcraft and that that was put upon the marriages, right? And put up upon the, the wickedness that had been put upon the marriages. Come on. So I don't believe that any witchcraft can stop what God has because nothing can thwart us out of his hand. But we do recognize that we don't rep we don't we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? And so words create worlds. I know that. So anything concerning any wickedness, any any wickedness in high places that would come against the marriages once you get married, right? Come on. Bless you apostle Rick. Come on, anything that would, would come against or, or, or try to cause issues in the union, union. We're not, we're not, what is it? We're not ignorant of satanic devices, right? We don't worship satanic devices. We don't worship deliverance. We understand that we are delivered. It is a free gift from God. But at the same time, we also know we have to fight differently, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we know if you, if you study glory, right? You study glory. It talks about the splendor and the majesty of God, right? Honor, praise, and worship God's presence and manifestation, transformation. The glory is tangible, the glory is tangible. Second Corinthians 3 and 18, it says, and we all with an unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same in it image from one degree of glory to another. He takes us from glory to glory, from faith to faith. But let's not forget that Daryl and Tierra are they attend a word of faith church. That was a big piece, right? And actually my foundation is word of faith. That's where, how I grew up. So God was letting me know, listen, you must have faith concerning this. Don't lose your faith in this area, right? In words of word of faith churches, you know, although they, it kind of got off into like the, the name it and claim it stuff, what we do know is the foundation of word of faith is the same thing. I say words create worlds. The foundation is faith comes by hearing, hearing what the word of God, the foundation is whatever is in this word is what it is. It stands. Come on. Come on. So the faith is such an important place here because I feel that many have lost their faith in their marriage and also in those who are unmarried have lost their faith. But there is going to be a revival in this area. Stand still and see his salvation. I'm telling you, God gave me this dream to revive the people concerning this area. There shall be miracles in marriage and there shall be miracles for the unmarried. Hallelujah. 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 The songwriter says, I've, I've found him and I know him. I found him. I've tried him and I know him. I found him to be a friend. He is our friend. I'm telling you, and you're going to see how your friend blesses you in your marriage and for those of you who are unmarried, I believe for Lakeland Revival, 
to be possible in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So in areas, remember, there was the pieces. You might have to go back and listen to this. There was the part where the guy was married to a prophetic word that had been spoken over his life. He was married to the woman, but the woman decided to leave the word. And so there are those who are bitter over prophetic words that have gone wrong, prophetic words when people don't follow through, when they just don't do what they're called to do, right? There are people who feel that. They feel that that funk. They feel that... Um, they feel that stress or that 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 pain from what happened. Let me tell you another name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I remember, interesting, because my friend was in this dream too, and her name is Kim. And her name also means royal or noble or wood or meadow or royal or noble. So I have to still figure that part out. But I'm telling you that God is speaking. Come on. And so, Father, we just thank you this afternoon, this Friday afternoon that your promises are yes and amen. We thank you that you have a plan and a purpose. And Father, we have just seen the preview, but Lord, we are about to step into the multiplication, God, the manifestation. We are about to step into the word. Father, I thank you that you heard us the first time. And so, Father, I pray for marriages, those who have been married for years. Father, I thank you for beauty for ashes. I thank you for a revival in marriages. I thank you, Lord, that you would cause their businesses to flourish, their marriage, their love life to flourish, their sex life to flourish. Lord, I thank you. You would cause their date life to flourish in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would connect them with the right couples. Father, that you would give them ingenuity and innovation, that they would come together and build something together. Father, let there be partnerships, business partnerships and marriages, and they would connect with people overseas. Father, let them travel, give them extra money, extra income. Father, I thank you for the dreams that they have been waiting on to move, to shift, that houses would be open, that doors would be open. Father, thank you for the prospects. Thank you for the children. Father, thank you that you would bless their womb, that you would bless their children. Hallelujah. That you would bless them in class, that you would cover them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, thank you that you would keep them out of harm's way, that they would, that you would trust them. Hallelujah. That you have entrusted them with their children, with their marriage. Father, bless them coming in and bless them leaving out. Make them the lender and God, make them the lender and not the borrower. Hallelujah. Father, let them see the manifestation of the prophetic word. Let them see the manifestation of that which you have spoken over the years. Let them begin to walk in a spring season. For many who have walked in winter seasons, I declare spring seasons over the marriages in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that even though for those who have had miscarriages, Father, that they would carry children to full term. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, that you would reconnect them, that you would give them vision and dreams and goals. And God, they would begin to build stronger and stronger. I call forth the Nehemiah generation concerning the marriages. Hallelujah. Let the Nehemiahs arise. Let the Ezra's arise. Let them build together in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Hallelujah for building multitudes, God that they would build, God, that they would build and be connected, hallelujah, for vision and not for mammon, hallelujah, I thank you that there are any assignment they would try to uh, cause them to be not together. Any assignment would be thwarted. Hallelujah. Father, give them wisdom. Let them not have doubt. Let them not have fear. Let them not have anxiety. Let them not have depression. Let them not have the pressure from this world. Oh God, let them come together and pray. Let them pray concerning the assignment. Let them pray that and let them not be in the wrong assignment, walking aimlessly. I decree and declare that vision come forth. Let vision come forth for 
the man. Let him walk in his divine planning, in his design, divine seat. Let him stand tall. Let him stand up. Hallelujah. And be accounted for. Put the word of God in his mouth. Oh God, let him shoot like an arrow. Hallelujah. Let him hear your word and not, and not be led from the left or the right or not be led astray. Let him stand still and see your salvation in the name of Jesus. I decree that there will be a revival in marriages. Hallelujah. That even those who have been apart, God, that if you have called them together for the prophetic word, let them come back together. If that is your uh, word, if that is your will. And if it's not, Father, I pray that the right person who will come along, that even as Saul would it, David would. I decree and declare that they would come together for your purpose, for your plan. Hallelujah. Every satanic agenda and satanic attack against marriages and the unmarried. Father, I thank you that it's thwarted in the name of Jesus. Father, let your glory be upon us even now. I pray for those who are unmarried. Yeah, God, I pray for those who are unmarried. Hallelujah, that the manifestation of your promise shall come. Hallelujah, that the wedding of the bridegroom has come and the bride has made herself ready. Hallelujah, Father, that we are about to see more marriages than we've ever seen in our life. More marriages taking place, not just to be married, but let your glory be upon them. Let it be the marriage that is confirmed by the Lord. Let it be stamped with your approval. Let it, God, I pray you remove his eyes from the wrong person. Remove her eyes from the wrong person. Father, that they shall see you. They shall see your hand. Hallelujah. Let them be on in demand. Hallelujah. Let marriages be in demand now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that all witchcraft is thwarted. Yeah, all witchcraft is thwarted, Father. Hallelujah. Can't nothing pluck us out of your hand. So I just decree and declare that every spirit of perversion would be moved. And I speak against the spirit of domestic violence. And I decree and declare that we shall not walk into domestic violence re relationships. Hallelujah. And even those who struggle with that spirit, who have struggled since they were kids, men, I thank you, God, that you have put a cap on their mouth and even on their character, that they would change how they are and that they would walk into the anointing and the calling of who you have called them to be. In the name of Jesus, there are no perfect people. Lord, let us begin to accept people for who they are and that you would change them. It is not our job to change anyone, but it is your job. Holy Spirit, I pray that you cause the women to pray like never before. Hallelujah. And that you cause the men to pray as well. Glory to to God, that no longer will they chase Instagram models, no longer will they chase TikTok models, but Father, let them chase that which you put in them since the ad, like Adam, the flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, let them chase that with who you assign them to walk alongside. God, I decree and declare that they shall not be any chaos. I come against the spirit of chaos. Hallelujah. I come against the spirit of chaos concerning the marriages right now. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that every dream that you send will be the dream of the Lord, that they would receive the dream of the Lord, that it would not be any dreams that are satanic, any dreams that are causing them to go to the left or to the right. Let the dream of the Lord be sure. Let them not be confused. Let them not be obsessed. I come against the spirit of obsession right now. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of obsession. That obsession, that obsession with who you thought it was, that obsession with that false word. And come on, I come against obsession. I just decree that you shall have clarity and revelation about who your set man is. Hallelujah. Who your set wife is in the name of Jesus. And every unauthorized voice, come on, we we te tear down 
unauthorized voices concerning marriage, those who have spoken to the married people and have led them astray. Come on, leaders who have spoken, who have not spoken the word of the Lord, who have caused people to be in lack. Come on, I come against that satanic agenda, hallelujah, that has a lock on the people's money. It called Rabande Sekea. Come on, every spirit that has a lock on the people's money, the couple's money. Hallelujah. The Lord did not cause us to be in lack. Whoo, come on. He has not called us to be in lack. I just decree and declare no lack. And I decree with long life, he shall satisfy us. So whenever there is lack, even in the body, even concerning health, even concerning, come on, the Bible talks about that we shall have prosperity in, 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 in our bodies. I just decree that our, our health shall prosper. That our health shall prosper. Come on. Come on, I decree that, that we shall see prosperous health, prosperous conversations. Come on, even where we're able to speak better and speak better of ourselves, any self-esteem issues that you're coming in, those who are unmarried, let you come even in, take care of that. Father, I pray that self-esteem issues <coughs> will be gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Rabbi Sekea. Hallelujah, Father. And I pray for faith. Hallelujah, Father. The Hebrews 11 faith. Come on, the Hebrew 11 faith. Let us see that faith arise in the body of Christ concerning this area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And anything that has become an idol, Father, that has caused us to be idle. Anything that has become an idol that has caused us to be idle. Father, I thank you that you will remove that, that stone. Hallelujah. And I'm reminded of the scripture. Hallelujah. That the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Father, I pray for those who have been rejected concerning marriage. Father, that you remind them that they, like you, your son, shall be the cornerstone in Jesus' mighty name. Whew, thank you for your promises that are yes and amen. Thank you for your promises that are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we tear down every high place. Remove every high place, every false teaching that has caused the people of God to believe they have to work, that they have to work for your promise. Your promise is there are things that you'll tell us to do, but when you try to work yourself through the bone, the listen, toil, there is no oil in toil. I don't have to toil in my marriage and I don't have to toil as an unmarried person in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. And tear down their pre preface. Yes. Prophet April. Listen, you guys, I, I, I forgot about this dream, but I didn't, this was a while ago. I had this dream maybe a month ago, but in the dream, I saw women who had a preference and the preference that they were trying to talk to the guy they was trying to talk to, he didn't have nothing in his mind. So God was letting me know that the preference was pre-Christ. Your preference was pre-Christ before you really gave your life to him. Now I got to go back to this dream to really get the details. But the preference was pre-Christ. Come on. So I once loved a certain type of man. Yeah, I did. And I continued to go down that path. But that is not who I married. That was not God's design for me. Rewire our preferences. Because your preference can lead you down 
a razor blade alley into an alcohol river, meaning no socks on. You just walking down, cut up, burning. <laughs> Come on. Change our preference to be your preference, even in the marriage. Change even what we used to enjoy outside of marriage. Come on, because when you have been wired by the world, bringing that into a marriage or even while you in the marriage, responding to that which you once responded to, that is not God. That is your preference that's ungodly. Rewire us. So I seen a girl in the dream. I remember this part. This is a whole nother dream, y'all, but I should have talked about this. In the dream, this girl had prophesied to this guy. She, I mean, she had prophesied to her friend. Okay. In the dream, there was a guy who was unmarried and he was really liking this girl. But because this girl had a prophetic word from her friend about who her husband was, she was pausing, giving the dude the Eisman, right? Do the Eisman on that. She was giving the boy the Eisman. She was like, uh-uh, I don't want to talk to him. Because her friend was prophesying to her. Really, her friend was, and, it, and it's not that she was a false prophet. She was a bad one. <laughs> right? She, she had no training. And then I seen that the preference that the young lady had as I'm, as I'm with the girl, I'm seeing that the preference that she had, the guy that we was looking at, he didn't have nothing in his mind. I mean, we all are God's children, but it wasn't a match. Lord, help us. Come on. You, you might not be a false prophet, but you just, come on. Girl, you prophet, and you find that on YouTube. A lot of la, 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 la. La la people just girl, what is you talking about? Leading people astray. Right? So you have to be careful what you're allowing in your ear gates and your eye gates. You got to uh, be careful what you're allowing in your heart. Yeah. I was accustomed to a certain type of guy. And then after that, I was accustomed to another type of guy, right? So it wasn't, it was like you had to have a young thug. Come on now. What am I going to do with young? Young thug is in jail right now in Atlanta. I mean, you know, not literally. I wasn't checking. But you know what I'm talking about, right? This is not what God had ordained for my life. But my mother, before she passed away, I remember she got into a relationship with this man and that's how she died traumatically. This relationship with this man, right? Who was not, who was out of her. What is you? But it was from something that you longed for when you was a kid. God rewire us. So when I saw how my mom did, I remember this prophet told me now it's a choice. You can date this guy or there's a guy with a cut on his eye. That's your husband. She had not seen James at the time. Two years prior, he had gotten a fight and he got the cut in his eye. I thought that was very interesting because that means that two years prior, she wouldn't have seen that he was my husband. I didn't even know him two years prior. But me trying to figure out which one I wanted to be with, right? Do I want to go with the guy that's about to make me crazy out here? Cook, Cracky got you crazy? No. I had to make a decision and remember that my mom was found in her home, passed away, had been there for a month over some heartbreak hotel situation, whatever, however she passed away. They didn't know was it suicide, was it? They didn't know how she just was in the house. But I remember her telling me, if love, real love don't exist, I don't want to live. So she thought that that was real love, but it was abuse. Father, give us a rewiring in our brain. Something I was watching when I watched Kurt Franklin video, he was saying, 
I was so used to being broken. I just love being broken. It just kind of gave me an understanding a little bit about how and why he do some things he does. The performances, everything. He was talking about himself, right? Why am I considering that this is the place that I'm just like loving being broken? I love chasing up after people. I love this because I have rejection in my life. And remember in the dream, and for those of you who are going to watch it later, we talked about Leah. Remember that Leah syndrome, that rejection that leads you to false relationships. Come on. <laughs> what? Come on. I want to be different and I want to do different. And I also want to know that there's no perfect people. So father bless us in that. So for those who are married and unmarried, I'm praying for both all of us out here who are in the kingdom because we have enough stuff that is around us that can get us off. Right. But we need a partner. God did not call man to be alone. I know what people say. Oh, there are some people who want to be single all day. I don't want to receive that for the believers. I don't receive that God shines his love more on me than you. I don't receive that. Oh, she got a husband because she did. I was none of those things. I was none of those things. I was a believer, but I didn't always wait well. So it show wasn't because of that. I just want to be keeping a buck. It wasn't because of that. So in so that lets me know. It changed my whole idea. It's his promises and his timing. Come on. It's his promises and his timing. Come on. Yes, Shemaine. He said, who am I well? Because I've only known me broken. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we just, we receive that God has a plan for the marriages. And so I want you to rewatch this, watch this. And yes, the Lord be our matchmaker. Also make our friends Run across. I pray for divine connection where friends can connect friends, where couples can connect couples, where it just be prophetic action happening in this area. God has a plan for marriages. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Absolutely. And we shall see a performance. We shall see a performance. And with that said, for the couples, the marriages, get out there and date, go on a retreat, do something, please. Get out there and date. Don't just be in the house. And for the unmarried, please. You'd have met me online, but y'all scared to date online. It just doesn't make sense. You got to get out of your head. And if you have, and, it, and maybe you have been online and you haven't had no success, come on, dust yourself off and try again. And you're not being thirsty. You are stepping out. And I believe just like I saw on the Facebook profile, the Lakeland, I believe that there should be a revival in this area. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Blessed is she who believed for there should be a performance in Jesus name. And you know what? Stop saying the wedding, the pool got peony. Uh-uh, the pool. We don't speak this word system. Y'all, one time I remember when I was unmarried, I was sitting there crying. Ooh, I was crying saying because I had read an article that said black women who are professional, who have degrees will not get married. Right. So I was like, why did you make me black? I mean, I was I was saying I was I was doing that. I was. I don't understand it. God, I don't get it. You know, just be extra because I am extra, but extraordinary. But you cannot believe that you have to trust God's 
plan and purpose for your life. And whatever that means, if I got to move, whatever it means, God, I know that there is a match for me. Come on. Hallelujah. We shall see a performance. Blessed is she who believe, for there shall be a demonstration. Come on, who feel a wind on that? Who feels a wind on that? I feel a wind on it. I feel a wind on it. Come on, I feel something on that. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There should be a demonstration. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, you guys, if you have a prophetic love story and you um, maybe, I don't know if you feel like I'm connected to or whatever, send me an email at admin at knation.org, admin at knationgroup.org, or go to my website and send me a note. I am going to be interviewing people who have prophetic love stories for the encouragement of the body of Christ. And so I definitely want to hear your story. I know that more people than me have this story. And so I want to um, interview. I want to talk to you. I want to see what God has done because I know that he's going to continue to do it. um, I posted my video about my marriage maybe five years ago. And even the prayer, there has been millions of views on the prayer. There has been um, so many hundreds of thousands of views on the um, on YouTube, on our story. So I know that these things are needed for the encouragement of the body. We see a lot of people who kind of talk from a technological standpoint of, oh, this is what God did for me because I followed all these rules. Honestly, the rule that I followed was God. I followed him. Like I said, I didn't always wait well. So I'm going to keep it real with that. I didn't always wait well. I was unmarried for what, uh, 12 years through a waiting on, well, from a relationship to relationship. Then I had another relationship, but waiting on the prophetic word. Was it 10 to 12 years? No, I'm sorry, 10 years waiting on the word. But even in that time, I talked to guys I dated. And so I believe God even used that because it each led me to where I'm at, you know. So I believe that we sometimes limit God based on our limited understanding, you know. Um, But, yeah, I would love to hear your story. And uh, for those of you married, unmarried, would love to hear your story. All right. Um, Yes. Okay, L. She said, "What about Rebecca? She was focused on serving her husband. Sought her out. You could be focused on serving God. Yeah, be focused on serving God. I was focused on serving God too, and uh, I was serving God. And everybody has a story, and I try to keep my mouth off of people's testimonies because there was Rebecca, and there was other people in the Word. You know, so we can pick out who, whatever character you want to put, pick out whatever, whatever person in the Word that you want to pick out. You know, but." We are our own living epistle and God is using the Bible as a type of shadow. The Bible was written for us, but not to us. When Paul was writing to Timothy, he wrote to Timothy, not to Alexis. But I can take pieces of that word and say, man, this word, God is using it for my life. Right. And so he is writing our story, our love story. Every day. Come on. So. All right, you guys. Apostle Daryl, I really, really, really want to interview you. And I'm telling y'all, y'all got to hear this man's story. And I hope, I pray, Apostle Daryl O'Neill, come on the broadcast. Come on. We want to hear this story. You and your wife, this is an invitation. It is a thousand of us live right now. I want to hear your story. You going to be, I was thinking about you the other day. You going to be one of the people on my broadcast. We got to hear this story because it's going to bring revival to the people of God. It's going to bring revival to the people of God. All right. All right, you guys. Okay. You said yes. All right. I'm going to inbox you right after this, sir. All right. I love you guys. Grace and peace to you. He said yes. Now he said yes. 
He said, yeah, and his story is banging, okay? Love after 60, where you at? His story is banging, so y'all gonna hear that. I, I'm gonna get him to be the next broadcast. All right, I love y'all. Grace and peace to you. Good night. Have a great weekend. Get out there. Do something fun. Bye now.